Just before we dive into today's podcast, this episode is brought to you by Bloomreach Engagement. Now, they're an AI-powered marketing automation platform that personalizes the online shopping experience for your customers. Now, Bloomreach brings the power of AI in three ways. Your customers' real-time data, the anonymous website visitors, and the Shopify data, so you know exactly what customers want, when they want it, and where to show it to them. Now, Bloomreach also enables Shopify companies to connect all of this understanding across all channels, so online, offline, including mobile, really to create the most personalized campaigns, engage in conversations with customers, you know, and most importantly, to deliver a shopping experience that's unique to each shopper. Now, Bloomreach Marketing Automation Solution integrates seamlessly with all of your existing tech stack. It aggregates data across the entire customer journey. And as I mentioned, it really empowers you as the founder or as the marketer really to act on all of these insights from a single platform. Now, the company has over 30 AI patents and serves over 850 global brands. So you can learn more ecommercefastlane.com forward slash Bloomreach or you can go direct bloomreach.com and get started today. You're listening to e-commerce fast lane, the podcast show to help you build, manage, grow, and scale a successful and thriving company powered by Shopify. Listen to real conversations with partners and subject matter experts as they share proven practical strategies, platforms, and the best Shopify apps to help you accelerate your business. The time is now for you to improve efficiencies, grow revenue, profit, and lifetime customer loyalty. Please welcome your host, startup founder and strategic advisor, Steve Hutt. Welcome back to e-commerce fast lane. My name is Steve Hutt. I'm your host today. And you know, thanks so much for tuning in. You know, with so many podcasts out there to choose from, I truly appreciate the fact that you're choosing to listen to today's episode. You're going to gain a lot of knowledge about your Shopify brand and about a lot of leaking revenue opportunities and kind of technical challenges that can go along with your website. As amazing as Shopify is, you're going to learn today that maybe there are some revenue losses from a technical challenge. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. It could be themes, it could be apps, it could be checkout flow, it could be loyalty. There are a lot of things going on. And so I'm um, just please stand by. You're going to learn a lot about an incredible solution that's helping a lot of brands right now. But don't forget, these episodes, they're going to be available now on all of your favorite podcast apps. We're obviously on Apple and Spotify and Google. YouTube, but we're also now streaming live on Amazon Music. So if you consume any of your content on Amazon or a Prime member, you might want to go check out Amazon Music for e-commerce Fastlane. Now, to get a deep dive in today's resources, head over to e-commerce Fastlane. I'll have everything there. I'll have extended insights. I'm going to have all the links and all the resources that we mentioned today. So on today's episode, I'm thrilled, actually, quite honest with you, because it's such a thing that gets revenue. I'm really happy to have him on the show. It's Dan Wardle. He is with us. He's the VP of sales from a company called Noibu. And what they do is they really focus on making, as I mentioned, they help e-commerce platforms, including Shopify, to work a lot better for everyone. And so they help identify a lot of the technical issues and some of the challenges that may disrupt sales or just at the end of the day, just really help online stores just to run a lot smoother. Now, Dan leads a team really that works very closely with e-commerce businesses and really helps them understand these bugs or errors. It could be apps, all these things where they work together really to help find these revenue generating issues that may be happening and they help fix them. And it's an ongoing kind of process. So they can do a full scan, which we'll talk about that in a little while, but they also, it's an ongoing process really to help find and resolve some of these technical challenges. So it's really exciting. I know it sounds technical, but it's something that with their tag added, it's just going to find some issues with your website and everybody wants more revenue. So hi, Dan, welcome to e-commerce Fastlane. Thanks so much for having me, Steve. It's great to be here. So I babbled a bit here at the beginning, but you know, I'm excited as, as technical as this is, I'm more of a marketing guy, I uh, to be quite honest with you. But when I heard about this solution, I'm like, hey, wait a second, like there are potentially a lot of technical issues that are happening with a website. And a lot of people don't realize these challenges until a customer sends them a message and saying, hey, I'm having, I can't check out or I'm getting a 404 error or this is broken. It seems even from my perspective, when I was inside Shopify, that seems to be the way bug squashing would happen or 
oh wow, I had no idea that that was even happening on their website. And it's all because of customers telling them. And I don't think that's the greatest customer experience where you have technology that almost pretends to be a customer and actually can see all of these holes. So can you talk a little bit about this Noibu service a bit? I just want to hear high level first and then some of the high level problems that I know you're solving today. For sure. Yeah. So what the Noibu product does is we are a tag on your site that's monitoring all of your traffic. And we break down your funnel into, you know, your general web page traffic, your add to cart traffic, and then your checkout process traffic. And we're constantly monitoring, you know, what percentage of people that land on your page normally add things to cart, what percentage then add to cart and get to checkout, and then what percentage checkout then complete their purchase. And then we're monitoring for any errors that occur. And we all know there's you could open up the console and every website has hundreds of little error codes popping up there in the console. But most of them are benign. So our average customer might have 80,000 errors appearing on their site at any given time, but there's probably only 20 or 30 that are actually impacting people's process through those funnels. And that's what we're really monitoring. We're doing almost like an A-B split test. So if, if this 100 people didn't see it, that error and they convert at 20%, but these 100 saw the error and they only convert at 10%, that means you just lost 10 of your transactions. And so then we're monitoring for that and assigning that revenue to certain bugs so that then we can surface that and say, hey, this is the area you should focus on. So, okay, so add the tag and then so it's scanning. So basically you just mentioned that it's scanning in real time and kind of organizing things and coming up with some ideas. So is there, have we talked about like the, like the alert system of kind of like other than the initial scan, are there any alerts and things that come up and say, oh my God, like oh, we're just finding this problem right now. Yeah. So a couple of things We're so we're monitoring all those funnels of like what percentage of people end up getting through the different conversion points. And then we're comparing that to when they see the error. If it's a lower conversion point, then that error must be causing them to not convert. It must be ah. visible to the customer as opposed to just in the console. Right. And that's when we're then prioritizing all the issues. So out of the 80,000 issues, here's the 50 that you should really look at because they're impacting revenue conversion. I see. Okay. All right. And that's basically what you said, though, is like to talk about the, some of the, the high level problems you're solving. Yeah, exactly. So thank you very much for that. So now I have a clear idea about the tag and kind of how it's scanning in real time and, you know, some alerts and some challenges in the, in the whole sales funnel. So I find that very interesting. What I am really interested in, too, is like the founding story. Like, I it just can you talk about the journey or like the inspiration behind this technology? A lot of times, and I could be wrong here, but a lot of times it's a, a technology company develops something for their own purposes. And then they find that there's a wider value to others than just a wholly owned internal technology. So I'd love to understand the, the founding story and I guess what uniquely positions like these leaders to build this software, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's always interesting to hear the different way the folks come up with these ideas. I'm not the idea man. I'm I'm the one who then activates it once they figure that out. <laughs> and <laughs> so at Noibu, there was you know two two gentlemen. They were both in kind of the the finance teams at, at large banks, and they realized you know there's just so much more opportunity. They were in Ottawa. They saw everything happening at Shopify, and they decided you know what, let's try to create like a a virtual shopping app or some kind of conglomerate site where there can be multiple listings and started to build that. And they found a third founder on the technical side to start building it with them. And then through that, they realized, you know, maybe that product market fit isn't perfect, but some of the things they built to monitor their own conversion on their sites actually became the product. They're like this, you know, this ability for us to see what errors are being caused and why people aren't converting through this kind of virtual shopping app would actually be valuable for stores that have enough traffic. <laughs> you know, we're, right. we don't have enough traffic. People aren't engaging with the product. But there's other companies out there like Home Hardware and, you know, Nude Sticks and Mac and everybody that they could probably benefit from this tracking that we built just on the side of our desk. Like, let's go down that path more. Mm -hmm. And uh, just a lot of iterations along the way, talking with different Shopify folks, talking with other industry experts, and ended up finding a really good group of like CEOs of DTC companies that gave them some guidance on like what they could see would be beneficial in their businesses. Right. And then what I find interesting though is that, like I said, beginning about the fact that it's usually customers, you know, giving feedback through customer support about the challenges with the website and not able to check out or and lots of other issues that can happen. And then so 
knowing that, like, other than your solution, like, like, are there any notable peers out there that like, I, I, I guess, cause I've never heard of technology. So that's why I got to give kudos to these founders, right? It's like to come up with this idea and then, you know, make it more out to the masses and stuff like that. It's just like, yeah, I, I, yeah. I guess for me, I'm trying to understand like other than customer service kind of alerting the technical team about some challenges that are happening with the website. Other than that, like who else is attempting to solve this problem? Cause you clearly have something very unique in my opinion. And that's what was really interesting during those early days. We meeting these other founders and these other DTC CEOs. And we realized like the way they're finding heirs is their daughters, their nieces, their cousins, <laughs> yes. their family yep. members were like, yep. ah, I can't buy the product that you're telling me is so great because of this error on your website. And then they just throw that fire over to some developer or engineer right. and says, hey, go figure this out. And that's really what kind of became the Noibu product is like a way to proactively find those, but also a way to reactively, if those support issues come in, we have a help code and you can see their exact session and shows you the exact errors they they occurred. Right. And that's where, you know, to your point about who else is out in the ecosystem, there's there's a lot of, you know, front end marketing based products. You mentioned you're kind of more on the marketing side. Like right. There's the uh, the full stories, content squares, heap, all of those folks that are really mm-hmm. helping marketers design the website to be the best path of least resistance. Right. And then you've got all the, the backend monitoring, the new relic data dog that's making sure your servers aren't going down. But they're really measuring the number of instances, not the impact on revenue. And that's really where we kind of bridge the gap between those two platforms. So that if you you know understand which errors are prioritized, maybe you then have to go into New Relic to really see what the error is on the server side. Uh, but mm-hmm. we're showing you exactly where to find that in New Relic. Or on the front end side, if you want to watch some of those session replays and understand why a customer is experiencing that issue, that's all in there. But we're not designed for marketers to do design work. That's still content square. <laughs> right. You know, we're sitting right in between those two places. I see. Yeah, because you know, over the years, I've definitely have recommended Full Story or Hot Jar or Lucky Orange is another one. Just, but they really are more session tracking, recordings, things like that. And you, it's very, it's very true. They are meant for marketers to understand why people potentially are dropping off and be able to watch these recordings. But this is not necessarily what you're doing, and I find that quite interesting. Mm-hmm, for sure, it's a bit of a side benefit. We have what I find is a lot of the time we'll get a lot of interest from the marketing team because they want to make sure that the amount of money they're spending on ads is not falling into a leaky bucket, (laughs) but they don't necessarily tell the engineers what to do. (laughs) And so that's (laughs) where, you know, we play much more on the engineer and and e-com side where, you know, we're showing them like right now you get this fire drill from your CEO and somebody can't check out. Well, now you can proactively fix that. But also if they do send you a fire drill, you can see the exact session. You can see all the error coding. You can do a stack trace. You can we even give you a suggested fix of like, here's some code that you could use to fix it. And it's all explained in, you know, plain language now, thanks to AI. Yeah, no, this is lovely. So I want to talk about like a real life success story. I went actually and looked at the website. Um, I love case studies and I know you have a bunch of them on the website and hopefully I don't put you on the spot here, but it'd be, it'd be great to kind of hear a story around, I guess, you know, a brand, a Shopify brand, ideally, that says, hey, we've experiencing these challenges and then they learned about you. And then I just would like to understand kind of like what happened on the other side by now being a customer and like fully implementing your solution. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The first one that comes to mind in one of our best case studies from Shopify customer is Nude Sticks. Okay. They had moved to Shopify, but then, you know, I six months in, they were like, you know, our conversion rate of like page traffic to purchase just doesn't quite seem as high as it was before. Mm. But, you know, everything's managed through Shopify. Everything seems to be working. Uh, New Relic was saying everything was fine. And so we did the site scan. And that's where we really identified that there are errors in there because there's so many plugins. You've got, you know, Klaviyo, PayPal, all these other things playing in the ecosystem that are constantly changing and then browser updates and all of that. And so, You know, their biggest thing was in their first four months, they found 30 really high impact errors. They solved them and they could see that their revenue then uh, went up and solved, you know, roughly 100,000 of revenue from those bugs they fixed. And they're not a huge company, so that's like very meaningful for them. And and they're very excited, obviously, with such a, a fast speed to that ROI. 
Yeah. Was there any, anything specific that, that cropped up? Because I think, that, you know, this is this, this podcast is more focused on, on Shopify powered brands and, you know, and I, you know, other than, you know, potentially the duct tape that's going on with multiple apps and maybe that, and then not talking to each other is causing a little bit of the blocker from a marketing side, but like technically broken a marketing funnel is such an interesting challenge that I believe it's happening, but if for some reason Shopify brands don't believe <laughs> that's actually happening or that it's a Shopify challenge just because of the nature of their product. So like, what do you say about that? And like, and is there any, anything specific that you've noticed? Like, I know it's probably tons of errors and things that can happen, but are any ones crop up more regularly? So the people listening today saying, oh, wow, that very well could be me. It's so interesting how wide of a variety we see. So the reason we do a two week scan of everyone's site is to really show them the like detail of what errors are happening and what it's causing and then allow them to like try to fix those errors kind of thing so that it proves to them like these errors actually are real. We're not just making it up on your website. <laughs> yeah. But it yeah. happens in all areas. Like there was one uh, one call I had this morning that their main issue is the drop off when people are adding to cart. So not their checkout actually seems okay. There wasn't a lot of bugs in their checkout where there is a lot of plugins. Their issue was on the add to cart. Something just wasn't working where there's about 10 different error codes that are causing some pretty high impact where those users are not able to add to cart effectively. They're getting errors like product not found, color not found, or it just goes back to their homepage when they click add to cart. And so then we gave them those stack trace and some error codes for them to go back and fix. And we'll talk to them next week to see how it works. Whereas other companies, you know, their checkout's a big mess. <laughs> and when mm. you go to pay, stuff is not going right and their plugins aren't working. And so it is a pretty wide range in the Shopify ecosystem, depending on how it's built. And obviously gets even more complex if they're, you know, headless and using hydrogen and things like that, which just introduces a ton more areas for, for those issues to crop up. So yeah, it is a, a really wide range, which is why we do uh, this scan for every one of our opportunities because mm -hmm. what what we don't want is a customer that joins us without doing the scan we do you know then we implement and we realize like no oh, the site's not bad <laughs> there's been a couple deals this month and some of them two of them were shopify where you know they weren't huge traffic they were using standard templates and uh we ran the scan and said you know what it probably doesn't make sense for you to use noibu right now and you know we can be happy to rerun the scan next year if you make any changes to the site but there's just not, you know, a lot of ongoing issues we're seeing on your site. Yeah. So the really, so the at the end of the day, and there is a possibility for you're right, basic theme, minimal apps that things in all likelihood are working well, but there can be a lot of blockers as a brand in the mid market to enterprise because then you know it's statistically significant now with more traffic, more cost for paid ads. It just it, it all of a sudden it just elevates just everything, and so one small problem can have a catastrophic problem with a brand. And so it's very interesting that that's kind of where you're positioned. But I'm glad that you can do that two week trial or that two week scan. We'll talk about that at the end of the show today because I think that's a really it's a cool way for those listening today. Like hey. You know, if you're wondering and you're in the mid market right now and you're wondering if in fact you're maximizing your ROI, you're maximizing everything and and you want to find out if in fact if your funnel is actually broken in some way or some kind of customer experience thing where people are not checking out, conversion rate is not as high as maybe you there's so many variables here for the marketing side about how to improve things, but then all of a sudden there's some technical things that a lot of people don't think about. Exactly. Yeah. We had uh we had a great one yesterday, actually. A customer has recently moved to Shopify on three of their domains, and they've gotten the CSAT scores. They know there's problems. <laughs> and so we're, uh, yeah. we were just working through kind of getting them on board and helping them work on that because the marketing team, they just you know relaunched some of their sites and actually recently became direct-to-consumer before they were more through like a multi-level marketing project. And what they what they basically said to us is like we're not going to spend on ads until we get our website fixed because we know the bucket is very leaky right. and we need to get those addressed over the next three months before we can start really spending on ads and growing our business. Right. So when you add this tag and you're doing these scans, and after two weeks, I guess there's a, a dashboard for DevOps or kind of technical team for a brand. So. 
are they alerted in something? Like, I guess, is the admin for this particular, like, instance, are they alerted in two weeks? Or, and then ongoing, like, w- what's the workflow look like when they log into the Noibu platform, knowing that this is being, the two-week scan is now complete, and maybe they're going to resolve those bugs and issues. And then if they continue on as a client, what are they seeing when they log into the admin? And I just want to understand what their workflow is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great question. A a big topic we have with customers because there's change management involved. You can't just buy us, use it for two weeks and then (laughs) shelfware it. Uh, You're not going to renew. Right. Uh, Right. So what, uh, there's kind of two areas. Our, you know, best customers really figure out, okay, how is my workflow going to work? Let's say most of your uh, engineering support is done through an agency, but then you also have some internal customer support for, you know, website chat and things like that. We work with you to kind of design what that workflow is. And the, the typical one is for customer support teams, customer facing teams that are getting these inbound requests. They'll have access to the tool that when somebody does come inbound, they can then go look up their session and understand what's going on and help them through their, their errors. So a bit more reactive. Okay. On the proactive side, we then have alerts and release monitoring built in where you can customize the, re- <laughs> the alerts any way you want. It could be, you know, I just want to kind of use it like a data dog or a new relic where it's going to flag if there's a high volume of instances in a day. So it's just going to flag me so I can go in and see if there's a server or an API out. But I could also set it where it's like just automatically flag any checkout errors on the payment side that have more than, you know, 20 users impacted, flag that straight to the agency for them to check out why PayPal's not working or why Mm -hmm. the, the shop app's not working. And so you can set up all those alerts so that you're not having to log in and look at Noibu. It's just telling you, you're like, hey, here's what you need to work on this week, and you can build it into your sprints. I see. If you do log into Noibu, it's a t- traditional dashboard uh, like you'd get in a lot of dev products where I think the biggest difference, though, is we're prioritizing based on the average revenue loss. And so if it's a, a bug that's having high impact on the checkout with lots of people not able to get through, then it's pushing those to the top. And explaining kind of what the error is, you can then click in, view the sessions, understand what's going on, view the stack trace, and send that through Jira or any of your other project management tools to get that addressed, whether it's internally or through the agency. So I know you addressed this a little bit. I just want to make sure I'm crystal clear with this. I'm sure people listening have the exact same question. It's just like, okay, other than using this platform to scan and then ongoing monitoring, like, And other than customer service being alerted (laughs) or marketing being upset about the fact that they believe there's a problem, but they don't know where it is, or they believe there's some anomaly going on with conversion rate or whatever it is, or whatever the excusitis is about marketing not working well, there truly can be a technical problem. So what else are people doing if Noibu is not right for a certain brand today, let's say, like what else are people doing about finding these technical challenges with a website? Mm, yeah, a lot of larger brands will have like a QA team that's just kind of going through the site, trying to uncover things, responding to Twitter and, and inbound as well. There's a lot of a lot of our customers will use a new relic or a data dog to flag high instance problems. And then they kind of take a look at them to see if they actually have impact or if it's just noise. And that's kind of their biggest feedback is like that doesn't really work. And then there are some platforms that will kind of measure the the really front end, like the design aspects of the errors. So things that might be popping up in the console, as an example, like a content square or a full story, or at least it's giving them some insight. And that's where this two week trial that we do is it's very interesting when that the call I had this morning, as an example, where we were reviewing their top 10 errors. The engineer just was huffing the whole time. He's like, oh, no, I got to. <laughs> I'm going to have to fix all these now. Yeah. <laughs> and yes, I didn't know they were there. Like New Relic wasn't showing me. And I can't remember they used, I believe, Hotjar on the front. Like there's no way you'd be able to watch enough videos. Yeah. You know, right. they have a million views a month. They're not going to be able to do that many session re- reviews, right? Right. To find those errors. The extreme large companies will also contract like a QA bot company that'll just be throwing a lot of synthetic users through your site to try to uncover blockages. I've only had a handful of our customers do that, though. It's uh, very expensive and yeah. tends to be a bit strange on your SEO because you're really pumping a lot of volume on your site that's not real traffic. Right. 
All right. Well, that's clear now. Okay. Now I just, just want to kind of understand that because I think we have all different types of listeners like on this show. There's a lot of people kind of in the early stages of their brand, you know, on Shopify core plan, trying to get product market fit. And, you know, in, in most cases, you know, that would be an easier to use content square or hot jar, lucky orange, full story, use something like that on a limited basis, just to make sure that they're, you know, or at least try to mitigate why it is your conversion rate is what it is, or if there is in fact a leaky bucket, that's probably step number one. But then moving forward, you know, people, once you're on Shopify plus and you're kind of in the mid market, um, I, I didn't really talk about your sweet spot, but maybe what would you call from, from a session or a kind of a, a GMV, like where do you sit well, where there's enough data to be significantly, like statistically significant? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great question. So what we typically look at is, you know, roughly if you've got 200,000 sessions a month, it's going to definitely add value to you and obviously okay. anything above that. So that GMV could range. Obviously, there's some companies with really low margins or some with really high AOV. So that could be, you know, a $10 million company, but it could be a $40 million company, depending on what you're selling. Right. Okay. This is cool. Well, thank you so much for that. So at least I have a good idea on that. And so... I'd love the idea about having people run these scans. I know that we kind of chit-chatted kind of in the green room before recording. We want to kind of offer that. I'm going to have the link in the show notes about how to get there. But can you talk about what would happen? Someone says, yes, I believe I have a leaky bucket. And I thanks for this recording today. I'm learning a lot about this Noibu platform. I want to do this uh, two-week trial. If they're a good fit, you'll go ahead and run the scan. What's the next steps to kind of get that scan and then... And then uh, what typically happens in two weeks once that scan is done? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. We have a, a simple JavaScript you can put on the site. So some customers want to, you know an NDA in place, obviously, since we'll be tracking things. Okay. And then we run it for two weeks. We usually have like a check-in point partway through that where we'll just kind of identify what your average order value is because that drives a lot of our prioritization and any other kind of metrics that are important to you to help at that final presentation where we come with you know, between five and 15 errors that we see are high impact on your site, kind of show a variety of them. So some that might be payment based, some that might be add to cart based, some that might be coupon code based to give you a nice kind of wide range of all the things that are happening. And then we do that kind of review of like, here's the way that they could be fixed. Here's the stack trace of them. Here's where the error codes are lying. Here's, you know, some third party that you might want to check out to help you identify what that is. And then we can put together a business case if it is interesting to move forward on a more permanent basis with us. Perfect. So I'll make sure I have this in the show notes then. There is a link on the website, but what I'll do is ecommercefastlane.com forward slash Noibu was N-O-I-B-U. That's going to redirect to the landing page of how to get that free checkout audit. And I actually just filled one out a moment ago. It's a great form here. And I filled it out for a brand uh, that I know well. A good friend is kind of director of e-commerce for this and multiple brands under their umbrella. And they're in your sweet spot on plus and, you know, upwards of 10 million in revenue. And so they're a perfect example, I think. And so I'm looking forward to hopefully I'm having this audit done. Uh, hopefully you'll just email me back, I guess, because I put my contact information yeah. there. <laughs> I'll communicate with their team to get this code on there and see about an NDA and then we'll go down that path. I think that'd be a great live case study to actually add to the show notes saying, hey, well, what happened with troll clothing and what did you find and how do they fix it? And so I think it's really cool. So I just want to thank you for that. Thank you for offering this free trial and this free audit because I think People just don't know what they don't know. And uh, knowing that you can, you know, see what these errors and bugs are, it's so different than kind of my typical marketing play of like how we can, you know, maximize LTV and improve the CAC and all these things that we always want to do. But we never really think too much, at least the marketing people I talk to, we don't think about these technical challenges. And so that's where you fit in. I love it. Yeah, that'll be a great follow up for the uh the audience to just kind of see a, a real version of what happens. Yeah, this is lovely. Well, thanks, Dan, so much for coming on the show today. Thanks for sharing all this. I know we've been we bounced calendars a bit to make this all work today, but uh, this is going to be really impactful. I think I've just, I've learned a ton. I've got a couple pages of notes here. And so it's, uh, it's a good episode when I have lots of notes. So once again, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you so much, Steve. All right, take care. Well, that's it for today's episode. I'd like to thank you personally for being a loyal listener of e-commerce Fastlane. It's my hope that this podcast is offering you a ton of value through growth strategies, tactics, and exclusive insider tips on the best Shopify apps and marketing platforms, all with my personal goal to help you build, 
manage, grow, and scale a successful and thriving company powered by Shopify. Thanks for investing some time today and listening to the show. I'm so proud and excited that you have a growth mindset and are a constant learner. I truly appreciate you and your entrepreneurial journey. Enjoy the rest of the week and keep thriving with Shopify. Shopify.